Today we'll talk about two important Python timing functions that can help us with our machine learning tasks as well as web API tasks when we request data from the cloud. Let me share my screen. Here I build a temporary um, Jupyter notebook in the cloud using Google Colab at colab.research.google.com. There are many libraries that can aid us in this task. Some of the more sophisticated libraries go into time zones, all kinds of locale time data. But here we're just using a simple core module time um, to illustrate what we're talking about. Two quick scenarios that are useful. So from the time module, I imported all the functions and methods. Here I'm mimicking a training loop by just using a simple Python for loop for range i in, for i in range 1000, print i. So it's gonna take a brief few um, time slots. And then what I did before any training loop, which this is mimicking, I will quickly get the starting timestamp and ending timestamp. What this means is when we do uh, time, we're essentially getting the current time slot right now in some kind of numeric representation. And because I store that in a variable called start, and then at the end of the loop, I store that in a variable called end. When I run this, I can now calculate the stat, which is how long that training loop has elapsed. So we generally see it's 0 0.07 or 0 0.08 or 0 0.09. So that's really cool. That's a very simple example, but illustrate, we can add those two uh, statements and have that calculation at the end of our Python training loop as well. That's pretty cool. And then um, here I have another function from the same module called sleep. And what sleep does is take into seconds. So sometimes, uh, for example, when we read and we mentioned at the beginning of this internship as well as we try to mention as often as possible, most data these days are not available for free. First of all, you should be qualified to use them and such as they might be only for personal, non-commercial, academic use only. Some of them for commercial use, it charges. Um, but regardless, often you can see this API have limits. So for example, yesterday I was reading the documentation of an API that requires us to do fewer than 80 requests per second. So, so that's saying, you know, there should be like a minor delay. We shouldn't have, um, we shouldn't have like um, a request every second. It should be like less frequent than that, right? Uh, so, and so, so we should, so that's really saying, that's really saying we can have, um, we can have actually almost uh, 60 requests per second, but we shouldn't go over that. So that's like, um, you know, we should control that between 60 and 80 requests per second. That's actually still very generous because the API is not charging us anything. However, we should always be respectful towards um the term of usage of the website, as well as the term usage of the data. So we're good developers. <clears throat> so here, if I just um, make it sleep for one second, you can see that's quickly over. Just out of curiosity, see if I can make this sleep for a shorter, like a flow time, great. So now if I, let's take out a zero here. If I add this to the training, to this mock, training loop, we should see the time elapsed will not increase. So this cell can run independently. And now we can see that's some unnecessarily added time because I artificially added this sleep function into it. So you can use this to delay um, your web request a little bit. And that is obviously a kind of workaround. It's not like the best way to do it. There are many 
libraries that do this even better, multi-thread and manage the processes better. But I'm just saying this is one way to quickly get started using the Python time module and start to do something useful right away in machine learning as well as data science, specifically requesting data in the web in a respectful, kosher way.